losing time, I'm fading fast I just wanna make it last Try to let go of the past I close my eyes, embrace the blast Sleepless nights and headaches stack Restlessness to hell and back What's my purpose, what do I grab? A slippery surface, a heart attack And sometimes you just gotta believe There's something that'll give you relief There's something that'll have what you need what you need I am going to make a feast Good morning She's looking for more snacks Good morning my sweet girl Have you been sick? Say hi She doesn't like the camera She says why do you spend time with that thing? and not me 24 7. <laughs> I like when they're cut thin, probably even more than that next time. I know this is a ton of food, but it's already 12.40 p.m. and I haven't eaten yet. I didn't have much of a dinner either. Dirty chai. I do eat the same thing often, but one thing I do like to do is change um, the variety with like dressings and mayos and things like that. So this one is pesto. This one's chipotle. I cannot say that <laughs> word. And <laughs> someone's going to tear me to shreds or maybe I said it right. I don't know. And this one's balsamic again from yesterday. So yeah, it's gonna be awesome. And I tend to not be a snack person. Like I'll go all day. I don't like grazing or snacking and I never really have, unless there's like some sort of occasion or you know, whatever. But yeah, I can go like usually like two meals a day two to three meals and that's it and that helps with weight loss for me as well yesterday I served her at the table and today she wouldn't eat it on the floor so now she's eating at the table <laughs> and by the way I don't think this food is the very best quality and I won't be buying it again It'll... but I usually do 50% dry, 50% wet every day. This is my favorite plant from my childhood. <laughs> if you live in a really small space, I've had cats my whole life and I find that this is the best litter when it comes to not tracking. I've tried, I prefer wood, like the, I don't know if it's cedar or what, or pine, but um, that was my favorite, but it would just get everywhere. It was like all over on my bed and on the couch. And Cats do not need chicken Alfredo, <laughs> but I'm gonna buy it in. My cats are gonna eat bougie tonight. I was just thinking to myself about some of the topics I wanted to speak on on YouTube and suddenly I was thinking about how <laughs> I was saying the things I experience with autism to myself in my head and then I'm like autism is a fucking experience it's like a wild ride <laughs> strap on your boots <laughs> um, it is like in some ways it is really beautiful like I know people don't like to call it a superpower and whatnot but I tend to actually walk on the I don't know what the saying is but I tend to see the good in things and I tend to be in a good mood like if people don't interfere with me like by judging me or like giving me a dirty look when I'm at the store or like not you know if I say hi to the cashier and they don't say anything back or if I'm, you know just like 
bad manners and stuff but in everyday life like if I'm not getting bullied I'm not if I'm in a good mood like I tend to just be in a good mood and I tend to like amuse myself like when I'm at the store and despite how I look and how I talk about things on YouTube that's kind of something entirely different because I'm talking about subjects that are like pretty hard that a lot of people don't really open up about well I haven't even got to the deep stuff yet but anyway what I was trying to say is uh, just that it <laughs> autism is like an experience like no other and like I was just thinking of something in the past that used to happen to me quite often not as much these days but almost any time a single word was said like today a song would come to mind and I would think of a song and I'd be playing a song in my head and that used to happen often just like with a simple word or phrase <laughs> I, I don't know what might happen to neurotypical people too but um, it for me it was like a switch where it was just <laughs> just come on but yeah um yes I was at the grocery store and I wasn't wearing any makeup and like I don't know I was just getting a lot of nasty looks like where I live being obese the way I am right now there's that's not common people are active out here or health conscious but like people just don't really understand obesity and like or eating disorders and being overweight like it's like anything it's like an addiction like I have an addiction to food I know that's ridiculous but I don't smoke I don't drink I don't do drugs I don't have a healthy outlet like I'm starting to I'm starting to move more like walk the dogs more eat healthier I would like to get to the gym eventually it is difficult with fibromyalgia sometimes to do anything at all but I am like a health conscious person. I like I'm very anti medication for a lot of things. Like I understand completely there's some people out there that need it and they are more productive on it and um, you know it keeps people safe and it keeps people alive and especially for certain things like if you need a antibiotic or something, there's no denying that that is important. It's just that like, I don't take, like, Tylenol for all my pills or ibuprofen or Midol or, like, I just don't reach for drugs at every moment that I need something. And when I have a cold, I tend to just drink, like, a ton of orange juice and then I'm better, like, in a few days. I don't really get colds very often, like, flus and, thank God, knock on wood. <laughs> I have to say knock on wood. <laughs> but anyway, um, <laughs> uh, but I'm a very health conscious person when it comes to a lot of things. Like I do have the environment in mind and I've been a vegan, vegetarian, pescatarian in rotation as in like you know, six months vegan here, uh, mostly vegetarian and then mostly pescatarian in my life since I was like in the ninth grade. I was like what, 14, 15 years old. And I try to buy products that are, even if they're more expensive, if they say they're organic or there's no parabens and dyes and that type of thing, it just makes me feel better. Like most recently I had to buy like dog poop bags that were just basic generic and not like the decompose or compostable ones and it just at times I'm like okay should I just be buying the absolute cheapest thing because I really can't afford to be spending more or every time I pick like every time I 
do something like for example every time I'm picking up my dog's poop I'm looking at that bag thinking this isn't compostable this isn't good for the environment and when you're constantly thinking like that that is stressful for your mind and body and so anyway that's just a little bit about how my brain works and and I don't mean to judge or diss anybody who um, does use drugs a lot. I think like everything's kind of it, how we think about that and how it all depends on like how you were raised or but my thinking is just that you have to let your body fight things sometimes. Oh and that comes to another thing. So for example, I grew up with cats my whole life and I did know I had some allergies, like if I'd pet them and touch anywhere near my face, sometimes my eyes would be watery or, you know, I'd get a runny nose. And uh, when I, there was a period in my life where I didn't really have cats and then when I got my two newest cats, Bubba and Ninja, um, I had like severe, well not severe, but like really bad allergies the first day they came home. Like my nose was running, my eyes were watering, and I just thought, oh no, I'm not going to be able to keep them. And I felt a little devastated, like because I had just brought them home and I was already so attached. And, but then when I just slept it off, I didn't take anything. I woke up the next day, I was completely fine. And... I haven't had a real issue since. Like, I've actually had less allergies to them than most in the past. Like, I've... Or I just know not to touch my face from habit. I don't know. Like, I mean, <laughs> when you're watching me in the videos, I'm touching everything in my face and my ears. And But I probably just washed my hands. <laughs> but anyway... <laughs> um... I'm just trying to say that like oh I just really wanted people to know about that like if you're getting a reaction to a pet like well yes if it sucks in the moment then take the pill but if you can if you're going to be somewhere for a while or you just got a cat or a dog and you're having a reaction give your body like 24 hours before you make a decision about drugs like my uh, the pharmaceutical companies are going to come for me, but <laughs> I don't know. I don't want to really think like that anymore. Like, I'm tired of kind of thinking that, like, big pharma, this and that. I mean, there is a lot of greed and there's people suffering and needing, like, diabetic medication that's outrageous and some people can't pay for anything unless they have insurance and I know all of that is really horrible, but I don't want to believe in my heart that every person out there in that industry is, like, out to ruin people's lives, or, like, there's a lot of people out there who just need a job, and, uh, it's, I don't know, it's the CEOs and the head honchos who are, like, the ones to blame when it comes to pricing and all of that, but, or who knows, is it really their fault? Like, or is it the ingredients used for all these? Does that go up? And then they have no choice but to charge more. Like, you could be pointing your fingers at everyone. Yeah, so... I was thinking while I was taking this video that, like, maybe I shouldn't be showing my root home. <laughs> but that's another thing, like... I, I had a thought earlier that I just really want to stop living in fear. Like, I've lived in fear my whole life because, well, for starters, I had a traumatic childhood. I didn't really say why, but um, my dad was, like, a chain-smoking, alcoholic, gambling, abusive, on multiple levels, psychological and more, and uh, threatened to hurt me a lot in my life. And I'll get into that another time, but, uh, whoa, you 
you know when you talk about things it's just like like it's kind of like seeing your life flash before your eyes like I have I'm trying to describe all the reasons why it's abusive and then my mind's going like showing me images of like really fucked up things don't want me to speak up people don't want when I like fight for something that I think is wrong and I have strong opinions about things and anyway uh, it's just like I I don't want to live in fear anymore that's what I'm getting to like I people have threatened me to hurt me people and it came from my own father like the person that you're supposed to trust and rely on, the person that's supposed to have your back and love you unconditionally. Just for one example of what I'm trying to say is I would hear things like, hit me so he can claim defense, like things like that. Like the only reason I didn't get beaten more and I was threatened more is because I would speak up for what was wrong and he knew he couldn't tr control me and more importantly than that is he valued his own freedom more than anything. still suffer from all of that today like I don't care what anyone fucking says like they say that they've been through hard times in their life and they tell you like it's all in the mindset and like if you do this and do that you're letting them win and whatever but it's like you have no fucking clue or it's entirely different for one person versus the next like okay say someone two people were abused the exact same way every single day or every, or weekly, monthly, like whatever, the exact same punishment. For starters, every brain is wired differently. One punch can like cause death or seizures or whatever, one bad hit. And every body is different. The food that goes in, the nutrition, if you grew up in poverty and you were like eating a lot of processed foods and sugar and having day old donuts for breakfast and shit like that or just missing meals, like that affects your mood, that affects your development. And there's just so fucking much that people don't understand like about it. And I did put it behind me for the first 20 years, 28 years of my life, I didn't acknowledge my abuse. I was like, it could be worse. It could be worse. Yeah, it could be fucking worse, but that doesn't allow a person to heal and actually learn from what had happened or 
acknowledge it. Like, I wanted to kill myself because, like, no one could understand. No one was really listening. People were gaslighting me and making me feel like it wasn't that bad. And it's like, oh, I just really couldn't connect with people. And I finally met someone who had been through it and So, I'm going to get to that another time, but what I'm saying about living in fear is that I just, I am done with feeling like someone's coming to get me at all times. Like, I had a really fucked up experience last summer, which was a little less than a year ago, and I'll probably talk about it another day. And for anyone who does catch my videos, who knows me in my past and is worried about me naming names, I might explain stories, but I'm never gonna say, oh, this person, or maybe I'll use a fake name or something, but, um... Anyways, I had this really bad experience, and, uh... And the guy threatened me, and it just put me on complete edge, like, for all the trauma I've experienced in my past. Like, something like that can really set me back, like, it made me feel depressed and uneasy, and it affects my sleep, and it, it affects everything, and... Like... And it's like, I'm, if you, like, someone's going to hear, oh, you were threatened. Well, what did you do? There's two sides to every story. I swear to God, like, I'm not out there to, like, get people. Like, I really gave this, these people a chance and I tried to just do the right thing and it, everything gets twisted and people put words in my mouth and people just completely take advantage and the mother of this family like I overheard her say oh she's traumatized and like laughed like I had mentioned to them that I have trauma in my past and I'm a disabled person and she's laughing on the phone with someone about me being traumatized like that's the kind of fucking shit I've had to deal with like who the fuck does that like that is really sick like, the only time you'll ever really hear me talking negatively about people is if they've, like, really done something or they've done something to me. But even then, like, if I just witness bad behavior and stuff, I'm usually not just talking shit about people. Like, well, I don't know. That's maybe not true. Like, if I see something wrong, I'm going to, like, speak up. But anyway, I'm here now, so... Um, yeah, I don't know if I'm actually going to post this video or I'm just going to, like, use it as info as what I've done today, but, um, yeah, I just, uh, I'm done, to look, like, living in fear, and, like, I had a little thought that, oh, well, if I start sharing too much in my life, then that's going to give people insight about where I am and where I live, and, like, really harmful people in my past are they gonna find me are they gonna hurt me or am I gonna d get like new stalkers or something but I, uh, I just am not thinking like that anymore I'm not gonna live like that anymore I'm just done with that like people have tried to take my joy from me take my happiness like they see me happy and people purposely it's like I know this just sounds like you think way too much about yourself but I swear from a young age to now it's like anytime people see me happy there's like there's certain souls in the world where they just try to stomp on it like they can't bear to see someone fat and ugly or whatever like being happy like I should be just as miserable as they are or something <laughs> and thank god I'm not like I've been through fucking hell and back and I'm still smiling and I'm still kind to people unless they give me a reason not to be but yeah anyway that's my little video as I'm going through this video right now like it's possible that my f content will never really like 
reach the audience it's intended for and where people won't comment or whatever but I was just thinking about one thing that I said last night saying that like people don't know what they're talking about and it's not easy just to like see the positive and whatever but it's it is just really complicated like the reason I feel strongly about this and I think that is because you could even take two people who've gone through the exact same abuse but say that one person didn't have any family or, or support or friends and the other person had siblings, had cousins, had aunties, uncles, and had good friends at school, like, that will greatly impact how the person thinks and feels and how they're able to cope with what they've lived through. So, yes, there's a lot of people in the world who've experienced abuse, and some people come out better for it. Not better, but some people come out with a completely different outlook than others and but it's all based on what it's not I don't know I don't really think it's all on the person like they just make their decisions and about it and that's that it's kind of, there's so many factors like for me I think the reason why I have had a lot of a harder time with the abuse that I've suffered with is that I haven't had support in my entire life. Like, even when I've had friends, they never really listened. They didn't go through the same thing or they wanted to keep life on the positive side of things and they didn't want to hear about the details or acknowledge. Like, when I was really young, I would get drunk and then it would like come out of me like it would make me cry and I was like a bummer at parties at times and like I remember almost nobody like not none of my friends who I've had for like years and years and years would like console me and make me feel good like and I do remember one of my friend's sister's now husband and father <laughs> he actually like sat with me and made me like helped me while I was crying about an issue and it's just like the reason I mentioned that one thing is not me thinking like lusting after this person's husband or anything like that is just that there's very few souls who like truly understand and I think just a lot of people put me in this category of like being over dramatic or negative or whatever they saw in me that I still don't understand because I can't comprehend how people can just treat people who are different than them so terribly like when they're obviously suffering or disabled and there's obvious signs that they're not like the others and so and people are judging me just based on what I say or think or do or how I look and and then it's like they don't even know what I was experiencing at home or they've heard of parts of it and then they think they have the whole picture like <laughs> like I had my friend recently innocently ask me how long does it take to really make the earrings like like I know it didn't, she didn't mean to ask it like that, but it was kind of like, it, 
just made me think like a person was asking like isn't it just taking something putting some glue on it voila it's so much more than that like when it comes to making my earrings I have to buy the items that take time to come to me then I have to sometimes smash them or have to put them through the tumbler smashing can take a lot of time sorting takes a lot of time putting them through the tumbler takes a lot of time there's like four different grits and it tells you on the label that you should be tumbling for like almost up to a month at a time and I do like a different version but then I have to take the item I have to glue the item and I have to let it sit for about 24 to 48 hours then I take resin to seal the glue seal the back of the rock so the rock isn't really like touching your skin because um, you know geodes and stuff I, I didn't like scrub them so they're like it has the original outer shell and I put resin over top of it because and because you can't just have like the rock touching your ear if I'm gonna sell anything I don't think people would appreciate that so I buy this ear safe like skin safe resin to put on top then I have to let that sit for 24 to 48 hours then I have to I have to buy more materials all the time like glue and resin and the backings of earrings and everything and then finally I have to take pictures and weight and dimensions of everything I haven't even got to the website part yet I haven't even gotten that far I'm just like making it then once I have enough then I'm gonna post it somewhere online but the reason I went on that tangent is just to say that like if you say oh I grew up with an abusive father or you know my dad was mean to me or threatening or like if you have not gone through it like I think people's brains they can only see so much or they can only take in so much or they've only seen so much in movies so they think it's like that and like I'm talking serious psychological abuse every single day it's like walking on eggshells in the house um alcoholism music blaring till like two three in the morning on a school night missing meals being waiting outside of the VLTs while he gambled like a child left alone in a hotel outside of the VLTs where I could have got abducted or and I'm sitting there so long not just like for a few minutes like sitting there so long where I get up to go look at the door is he coming yet and I go back and I get scolded I'm talking like being hit so hard that you actually have a hard time sitting for a week like when people say I was spanked so hard I couldn't sit for a week or if they threaten it like that but I was actually hurt so hard one time in particular that it was really hard for me to sit for a week like I had damage to my tailbone or that's an instance that I don't exactly know what happened because um I'm gonna get into that another time but like and even when I say it right now and I'm not crying and I'm not showing a lot of um, emotion about it I'm just saying the straight facts about it like I don't want to make it seem minimal like this is really messed up stuff like and for example like he was cheating on my mom and I just knew it I could see the signs as a really young kid and that was one of the another reason that drew us apart like not only was he abusive and drink like an alcoholic and gambling away our money like I mean we could have not our money but like we could have had a really nice life if all of that hadn't go gone on and um but like with the cheating I was like gaslit to believe like it was all in my head and then it turns out 
and I didn't even find this out until after he died. 28 years into my life, when he died, I found out that he did cheat. So, yeah, a lot of stuff was kept from me, and I was gaslit growing up, and, and you know, when I reached out, a cry for help, like, it wasn't there, and no sympathy, no love, no affection, and, um, from the other parent, and, like, when I did express how messed up things were, and I wished that they would leave, and we could, like, live separately, the, through my dad's past, and, like my dad's childhood in my face like saying this had happened to him like at the time I felt like a lot of remorse and I felt um a lot of guilt and I felt horrible for what had happened to him but look like looking back now it's like how dare you like, what happened to him has nothing to do with me as a child. Like, you didn't sort through your shit. You brought a child into this world. You're abusing this new child. And you think that that is a reason because of your past. Because you didn't deal with your shit. And you're going to ruin a whole new life because you didn't deal with your shit. And that was thrown in my face because he had it worse than me. Like, so, like I said yesterday, like, 28 years of my life, I'm, like, thinking things could be worse, things could be worse, things could be worse. Like, I could be a starving child in Africa or, like, how horrible is that to think, like, to compare yourself to someone else's suffering? Like yes that can be humbling for some people like things could be worse but of course it can always be worse but d that doesn't help you deal and heal from your own trauma and if anything the reason I felt like that for so long is because I was constantly being gaslit to made to feel like I was just the bad one and it was all me and like you know, you, I was a bitch or something, like, as a, ch like, as a teen, by the time I was a teen, I was fucking angry, like, yeah, and I had every right to be, like, the things I experienced that I thought kind of, like, when I was really young, I just thought everyone's dad was like that, like, angry and horrible, and, and then once I finally was older, and I was, like, spending time at other people's homes, and seeing how other families operate, and, healthy environments it was like wow I had no idea that <laughs> uh, it's just really complicated I started talking about one thing and then 10 minutes in I'm talking about this but I will break it down differently another day I don't want it to just be like oh here's my abuse and not talk about it ever again like there's a lot of really a lot of a lot to it and how it impacts everything like how it impacted a child like just imagine a child who's abused who has to go to school to learn like it affects your concentration and there was a time like when I was really young I had to pretty much as early as I possibly could I had to fend for myself I had to feed myself I started to do laundry at a young age I had like holes in my pants that I had to learn to sew up I everything was on me and at such a young age so I just had to like grow up really fast to be able to survive and I think that's also another topic like how it I think it does make me somewhat, like, I'm not a narcissist in terms of, like, I don't have empathy or compassion for other people. I 
have always put myself in other people's shoes and I've always cried at other people's pain and joy and I've like I love animals and I have a lot of I have a big heart believe it or not like the despite how I look or how I sound or how I'm talking like I really do care and I had a home daycare for four years which was like the best time of my life I loved kids and I loved being able to protect them the way I wasn't that was one of my biggest goals and um and uh I forget what I was saying but it's just that I was talking about compassion and I have to like listen back. Okay, I remember what I was trying to say. So um, I think people have looked at me in my life and how I've acted or reacted and have treated me like to be sort of like self-centered or like I don't know. I think a lot of the time, maybe it's like a buildup of little comments here and there, but some of the time, some of the things, oh, I just have to restart that. Um, anyway, I was trying to, what I was saying about, uh, narcissism, like, or I think part of that has to do with, um, like if people from my past, people from my past would say things about me, like trying to make me look self-centered or talking about myself too much or whatever, like that tends to be just a general autistic thing where (laughs) it's like my special interest is myself, (laughs) but with me um, more so I think it's because when you're a child who had to like fight to survive you have to put yourself first like in order to freaking live like I'm not kidding like there were times where we only had condiments in the fridge like I was having mayo sandwiches and then there'd be times where if I was lucky enough to ask for money I'd have lunch that day but what could what child is going to make the right choices like I was having like chips and chocolate bars for lunch from the corner store like what else could I really get there or I was having like candy at the um local club or something like but yeah I was um I was starving a lot and I think that's like where some of the wait so back to narcissism I just want to quickly say the reason I said that is that I think like when you've had to fight to survive um you put yourself first and it does put you in this kind of like mind frame of I think you know what I'm trying to say it's just hard to get the description out and I'm sure that this is something that you could learn in like psychology textbooks this is just me and my experience and I've like learned all this all on my own I don't really have any knowledge of um, psychology and I don't like read into things and I would like to but it is very triggering (laughs) because when you have actual trauma like you will diagnose yourself because those things are actually true it's not like just finding things like oh I do this I do that no I am I'm autistic I have trauma like so there is a fucking shitload in there and I'm worried I'll (laughs) spiral but um fuck what was I saying (laughs) um yeah I just wanted to quickly say that I think like when you have to fight to survive as a child then it does make you somewhat narcissistic at some point because you have to like find ways to live like I would I wanted to always spend time with my friends, but I would like probably ask to come over often or I was basically living at my friends' homes a lot of the time until we'd have a fallout or something. And then it's like, oh, I had to be back at home and, oh, and you know, it's like (laughs) some of those. 
something I found interesting growing up is I learned that my dad's abuser, who was his father, would spend months off in the woods cutting trees or something like that was part of his job. And uh, so he was with his mom, left with his mom a lot, but he had like many siblings growing up. So in some ways, like maybe the abuse directly from his own father was worse, but he had months apart and he had the support of other relatives. Like I've had almost like no family there for me my entire life. And I had to see my abuser every single fucking day, practically. The only time I ever got a break is if there was like a sleepover or I was away at camp with girl guides and like (laughs) like I don't mean to compare but like when it was compared to me like seeing how my dad had it worse I don't believe that because I had to see my abuser every day and I had to face abuse every day like there was not a single good day if there ever seemed like a good day it was by the end of the day it wasn't a good day Like, whether that be yelling, music blaring, always finger pointing, and, like, it, I will go into specifics eventually, but I'm just trying to, like, I'm just trying to, like, do the surface level explaining of the abuse that I endured, and the reason I just think this is important, it's not, like, me just saying oh, feel bad for me and cry for me and pat me on the back and tell me everything's going to be okay. This is, like, solely for educational purposes. Like, I'm going to share my life and um, I think it is going to help someone out there. I don't know how or why. and Because I'm talking about so many things. (laughs) I'm telling you guys about childhood abuse. I'm going to be telling you about autism. CPTSD, how it affects a person, how they're affected in the workplace, school, relationships, um, positive things, or just things I believe, or like, you know, even talking about my food sensitivities with the naturopathic doctor, and just like a multitude of different things, and a lot of people have this knowledge. A lot of people have a similar experience. A lot of people are going to tell you about their life. I don't think my life is more important than others. And like that, my story is just going to take off and blow up. It, it's just, I don't care. Like if it reaches just one person who can just feel better knowing that they've been through hell and back and like they can relate to me in some way and just not feel as alone and yeah it's just like uh, I'm not taking a video right now because I just don't feel like doing my hair or makeup and but I wanted to include this audio in the uh, video because I think it's important because when I'm talking and I go like when I'm talking about one thing and then I say oh I had to fend for myself and then I talk about money and then it turns into this and turns into that and then it's hard to get back to the main point and then along the way when I've listened back I noticed that I'm not giving enough details where it's just eventually I'll master this thing and I'll get more organized sometimes rambling is helpful like this is helpful for me too to just get it out and so I hope it helps others and it somehow and I hope that um, I can grow from this as well and finally move on and not finally move on like I'll never I don't truly believe I'll ever be able to like 
even 10 years from now, if my life is completely different, I'm financially secure and I have, say I've met the love of my life and I'm like ready and to have kids or something or whatever, like 10 years down the road, like what has happened to me is going to impact me for the rest of my life. 